I have a brief, prepared statement. My film is not a movie. My film is not about puppets. My film is puppets. There were too many of them. We were all in the wilderness together. And little by little, we went insane. So, Mr. Wright, as is his custom, will be making no statement today. And Bucky, as you can see, is in a total cataleptic state from his ordeal and must convalesce in his Bucky pod. And now I shall unveil what is merely a rough cut of my magnum opus. I guarantee that not a single person will remain unchanged by what is witnessed here today. Roll film! <laughs> This is the end, my puppet friend, the end of all your puppet plans and schemes, of all your puppet hopes and dreams, and all the puppets are insane, waiting for the puppet I'm still in Saigon! I'm here waiting for the AOK -okay to rescue my good buddy Hugo! I hear tell he's gone completely, totally insane! I tell you, this here room was making me more nervous than a bad case of athlete's foot! Which is no laughing matter to a song, believe you me! Wait, what was I saying? This gosh darn room's giving me the cabin fever! Come on and dance, come on and pump it, baby! Pump it, pump it, yeah! Alright! Pump it, pump it, pump it, pump it! Well, finally, they gave me the mission. Brought it up to me like takeout. Wait, or was that like the drive through Well, it doesn't really matter, because I was on my way. Getting a briefing from G.I. Joe. Have a seat, Sergeant Bucky. Well, that's okay, sir. I'll stand. Sergeant Bucky, when Captain Hugo was captured, you and he were on a counterintelligence mission to gather intel on the Puppet Yard Army. Were you not? Sir? <clears throat> I am unaware of any such activity or operation, <clears throat> nor would I be disposed to discuss such an operation if it did in fact exist, sir. Our intel shows that Captain Hugo was revered as a god by these simple savages. This was monitored over the air and verified as Captain Hugo's voice. <sighs> Every puppet has a breaking point. 
Captain Hugo has reached his. And very obviously he has gone insane. Yes, sir. Very much so, sir. Obviously insane! This mission does not exist, nor will it ever exist. What mission? I will set up the crate without a paddle in a Fisher Price pleasure yacht. A kind of plastic boat. Pretty common sight in bathtubs. But that was A-OK. -okay. I could use the air and the tides. Only trouble was, I wouldn't be alone. Where are you going, Bucky? I'm going to save my friend Hugo. Toot toot. Sure were a lot of gators in this here river. But I didn't have time to stop and jaw. I had to get up this here old man river to rescue my pal, and twarn't nothing gonna stop me. Me and Hugo met up in boot camp. I remember it as if it were a montage. Silver wings upon his chest. These are men, America's best. Men who mean just what they say. The fearless men of the Puppet Brigade. Private Sucker, what did your major malfunction? I don't rightly know, Serge, but I reckon it has something to do with the fact that I've had a styrofoam ball for a hand. <laughs> I will not have you defile my beloved puppet core. Drop and give me twenty. Twenty what, sir? <laughs> well, Serge, I can't count that high. <laughs> <laughs> Is something funny to you, Mr. Baldy? Front and center. All right, now both of you drop and give me 20. I hate you. <laughs> That's what I love about you, Hugo. You always know just what to say. <laughs> when we arrived in country, I sure was wet behind the ears. But my good buddy Hugo was there to keep me out of trouble. <laughs> Here we are, Hugo. Beautiful downtown Saigon. Ah, uh, pinch me. Well, I can't do that, Hugo. I don't got any arms. <laughs> me so horny, me love you a long time. Well, hello, little darling. No, no. Sock puppet too buku. Hold up there, little missy. Now what you got here is some good old-fashioned Oklahoma tube sock. But it's not too gosh darn buku. Come on, let's get out of here. Oh, sorry, darling. Maybe next time. We were assigned a platoon and shown the ropes by a legendary soldier known only as Surf Boy. Dude's nom is like totally gnarly. Dude, you gotta watch out for those bodacious VC. They'll totally harsh your buzz, bro. Hey, don't bogart that J, brah. Surf Boy was always in search of the ever elusive cosmic wave. It'll be Tube City, I'm telling you, Tube City. Totally cosmic. Bummer, man. Bummer. Well, he found it one night when he was fragged by that scallywag private joker. He always was good for a laugh. 
Side. I'm catching that cosmic wave, brah! Tube City! <laughs> Me and Hugo were in country together through our first tour. I tell you, Nam is one psychedelic madhouse. But through it all, the one constant was my good buddy Hugo. No matter how bad it got, we were inseparable. It sure is a bad bush, I tell you what. <laughs> I sure am glad you're here with me, good buddy. Get lost. Hey, wait up! It was on the night of the attack of the dreaded jungle shark that Hugo was captured by those puppet yard savages. Napalm was lighting up the jungle like a day glow Christmas tree. Whoa! Somehow, we got separated. Hugo, Hugo, where are you, buddy? I don't need no shenanigans now. Wait, what's that? That's when I ran into the dreaded jungle shark, fiercest of all predators. Jungle shark! Watch out, you dang old jungle shark! I barely got out of there with my sock intact, to tell you what. And then I finally caught back up with Hugo, deep in the Mekong Delta. Do, do you hear that? What is that, Hugo? Is that Charlie? How should I know? We're out here in the middle of nowhere. We're completely abandoned by our platoon. Well, well they were lucky they didn't fry you, Hugo. Ah, shut up. Whatever it is, it's getting closer! What do you think it is? How should I know? Why don't you quit bugging me and go look over there? Maybe whatever it is will get you instead of me! Good thinking, Hugo! What in the holy hell is that? Huh. Oh, there's two of them. Hey, hey, just mind your P's and Q's now. What's going on? Hey, hey, back off, bub. No grab ass. What are you doing? You dang savages? Hey, hey, get off me. What in the holy hell? I've got a monkey on my back! I've got a monkey on my back! Hugo! Hugo! What are you doing to my buddy? Hugo! Hugo, I'm coming! I'll never forgive myself for not being there for old Baldy. And worse yet, now he's gone off and gone native. What a fine, how do you do? But first, I've got to get past this old Dolong Bridge. G.I. Joe was supposed to provide air support. Thank you. 
Take that, you dang old jungle shark! I love the smell of wood socks in the morning. It smells like laundry. Joe sure was a crazy Gus, all right. Still and all, with crazy sons of guns like him running around, could Hugo really be that bad? Makes you think, huh? He was close now. Mighty close. I figured sooner or later I'd be seeing that shiny bald head. Yep, any minute now. Probably sooner, rather than later. That's how close I figured he was. Yep, getting closer. Closer by the minute. Gee whiz, I wonder if he could even get any closer still. Well, it's the next day and I reckon he must be even closer still. Yep, any time now. Well, golly! Hugo's been idolicized! This was it, all right! The end of the gosh darn river! And now I had some kind of hippie, beatnik cat to deal with! Smile. Say cheese. I'm a feline photojournalist. Been covering the war since 66. Meow! I'm with Hugo now. He's the best subject I ever had. With that beautiful bald head of his. And best of all, he's a crazy. It sure was a crazy scene Hugo had going. His followers obeyed every order, no matter how stupid. But mostly, Hugo just flapped his jaws while everyone stood around and listened to him like he was the lord of all puppets. And you know, maybe he was. Man, he is really far out there, man. He is just really far gone. Grand Tiger was a gravel cat that traveled on a barge. In fact, he was the roughest cat that ever roamed at large from Gravesend up to Oxford. He Pursued his evil aims, rejoicing in his title of the Terror of the Days. You dig what he's saying? You dig what the man's saying? Oh, he likes cats. <laughs> man, you are just too far gone, Bucky dude. That's why the Hugo likes you, man. He likes you because you're one half cat. <laughs> Oh, thank you, future cat. Oh. I was stuck there for days. Hugo didn't want to leave. He sure loved his puppets. But then, I was attacked by his followers. And carried to Hugo's inner sanctum. It smelled like moldy socks in there. Which is a smell I don't like. I saw them. Oh, a pile of little socks. All the socks that go missing in the laundry. The naming of cats as a 
difficult matter. It isn't just one of your holiday games. You may think at first I'm as mad as a hatter when I tell you a cat must have three different names. First of all, there's the name that the family used daily, such as Peter, Augustus, Alonzo, or James, such as Victor, or Jonathan, George, or Bill Bailey, all of them sensible, everyday names. Gosh, that boy could talk. I could see this would go on forever, or at least as long as there were still T.S. Eliot poems to read. A sock puppet can only take so much. Time to call in the airstrike. Almighty, almighty, this is PBR Puppet Gang with the radio check. Over. PBR Puppet Gang, this is Almighty. Standing by. Over. Boys, send in the airstrike. I authenticate Juliet, Oscar, Echo. I copy you, glorious bastard. We're on our way. Charlie Green, you are going for expansion. Roger, Joe, on approach. Fire! 